Hello, this is Dr. Joel Gooden. Welcome. Uh, I'll be talking about significance of the study, a section that is often in chapter one of a dissertation. So, obviously this is about significance of your study. Um, it's about why it's important to do. Um, one of the most common mistakes that I see students make um, in this section is they try to provide a lot of citations for things they're saying. Probably because I am constantly telling them to cite everything they claim. But this is one of the only instances early in the dissertation where you actually get to use logic and rationale to provide an argument for why your study is actually important. You're asked to describe why the study is important and how it can contribute to the field. So you're probably going to use um, the word important in a sentence. And you're probably going to use contribute to the field of study and it's typical that you'll probably just put in your field of studies there and you're really by doing this you're you're signaling to your reader especially a committee member here's where I'm saying it's important here's where I'm covering the part about contributing to the field of study it's a little ridiculous how obvious I'm asking you to be but by being that obvious your papers will move through faster because you're typically like when I'm reviewing a paper I look to see okay did they say how it was important did they say how it can contribute to the field of study if you've actually used those words then I can see them I often even search for the word contribute for instance and to see if you have that wording because if you do I can tell exactly where you're trying to do or to accomplish this criterion. Okay, so how can it contribute to the field of study? Basically what we're saying here is, what is it good for? What will it add to the field of study? Is it something that we need to know? Maybe there's a gap in the literature, a gap in the research, something that is not yet understood, not yet, um, maybe, maybe there's some conflict among the in the research, um, you know, different viewpoints that needs to be um, better understood. Um, I do not work typically with applied studies, so I'm going to leave that out of this discussion. If you have questions, you can reach out to me on that. But I'm going to delete that and say for PhD studies, explain how the results advance the guiding framework and contribute to the literature. Again, we're, we're making a case for why this study is important. And we're doing it with two sort of uh, sentences. They could be in the same sentence, but um, you're gonna say something like, the results could advance the guiding framework by And then you insert your logic and reasoning. So you could even say the results of the proposed study could advance the guiding framework by, by doing this. Um, and so this is that part I talked about actually in the last section um, on research questions about and in the framework section because what you're trying to do as a doctoral student working on a PhD is you're trying to um, extend a theory um, to um, promote theoretical prowess. Um, with a lot of studies like an EDD or especially a project study, for instance, in an EDD, there's no, it's more about um, having research that ends up in a deliverable. In a dissertation, typically, 
we are trying to have research that leads to theoretical understanding. And that's one of the primary outcomes that we are seeking. So that's something you want to do. That's why this sentence is so important. You start thinking ahead. You could be wrong. And that's why you want to use humble language, especially all throughout the significant section. You don't want to say, I'm going to cure cancer. This study will cure cancer. Be limited in what you say you'll be able to accomplish and also be feasible, which is very similar. Use humble wording to say it could help us understand a microbiome that can help us cure cancer, you know, or something like that. Be, be limited and measured and fair in what you say your study might accomplish. Use humble wording, like perhaps, or it could, or it may be, or um, potentially, or possibly. So instead of saying, It will cure cancer. Instead, don't say it will do anything. It could uh, elucidate um, I don't know much about cancer, so I'm just making stuff up. It could elucidate chemical um, neurotransmitters um, that play a role in the development of cancer. I don't like the word elucidate there, but it could identify. So by doing this, you might eventually lead to a cure, but you're saying it's one very small step um, and, and it could accomplish that step. So that's the humble wording that we're really looking for. Use instead of anything factual or an a uh, an hundred percent certainty is not your friend here. Um, in terms of significance of the study, humility is your friend. So avoid certainty. It will um, identify all the factors that lead to student success. Probably not. It could identify some potentially important variables that are influential in student success. That is a humble and more focused and more feasible statement. Um, so here we included these words and then we're going to do the same with the second part, contribute to the literature. I used may contribute to the literature by, and I'm just going to say, I'm going to insert some wording for you that you might use. Um, Okay, so here I've given an example. The results of the proposed study may contribute to the literature by addressing the research gap regarding emotional health of dissertating students. And of course, I'm using a specific study idea and saying, assuming that there might be a research gap. Um, obviously, you would enter your own words for your own study and whatever is fitting there in terms of the logic that will support how your study will 
contribute to the literature. So describe the benefits of addressing the study problem. You might say by addressing the problem the proposed study may Okay, and really we can just do this three times. So purpose and research questions. Answering the my and so you definitely want to change up this wording a bit. Um, but essentially here's what you're trying to say so these three might be helpful formulaic sentences for you um, and you want to change up so that you you don't sound redundant like a robot but you can use these to sort of get the words in the right places and then sort of finesse it a bit massage the wording um, potentially with the help of a chair or, or an edit editor um, speaking of editors, um, a lot of you may have access to something at North Central University. There's an academic success center that sometimes can help students with their writing abilities. The faster you are able to um, just optimize your writing, the faster you're able to build writing, scholarly writing skills, synthesis, grammatical construction, writing mechanics of all types, the faster you're able to do that, the better your paper is going to sound and the more you're going to get people to give you a green light to keep moving. In other words, you may be having the, you may be presenting the right content, but your wording, if it's so um, problematic that it can't be easily understood, then your chair or SME, subject matter expert, a second member, um, academic reviewer, university re reviewer, whatever the committee member is, they may not really understand that you have the right information. You just weren't able to communicate it well enough. So always be working on your writing skills. Um, understand that sort of the cost of an editor is often cheaper than paying for the extra time it would take to muddle through without good writing skills. I would suggest since with a doctorate, especially to be called doctor afterwards, you should be a good writer. That is something I want for all of my students. And in order to do that, if you do hire an editor, I suggest that you hire them as a teacher trainer as well as an editor. In other words, have them explain to you and go, go the extra mile, pay the extra money, whatever it will take, saying, don't just fix it for me, teach me how to do it. This will eventually cost you less with the editor and it will also give you the skill set you need, um, hopefully, after your dissertation is finished. When some students, if you just use the editor to fix everything for you, you don't have that skill set afterwards. Uh, same with if you use a statistician and don't do your own stats or don't learn it with the help of a statistician, then you're sort of stuck without that skill set after the dissertation is finished. And people may expect you, people in future jobs, may expect you to have that skill set they, they may wonder why you don't. And the truth is that maybe you got some help and didn't actually learn it. Um, and so I encourage all of you to, to get the help you need, but also not to just lean entirely on them. Let's double check that I've 
uh, completed this, describe why the study is important, how it can contribute to the field. Just use these sentences. Um, maybe a couple sentences here. Let me do sort of a sort of a how long this should be. Um, here should be two to four sentences and the benefits. Um, I'm going to say four to eight sentences. So overall, this is going to be maybe a few paragraphs, two to three paragraphs. It's pretty short. You're just making the case for how you think your study will be valuable. I look forward to speaking with you again in our next section. Let's see what we have next. Um, definition of key terms. Again, on the significant section, if you go over one page, be sure to trim it down. Get some help if you don't know how to trim well. Um, that's part of scholarly writing as well. So good luck, and I'll see you soon. Thanks.